Welcome everybody to a CUDA worksheet tutorial. We're doing multiplying special case polynomials in this video. Now, this video really needs you to understand how to multiply uh, binomials together. So if you don't understand that, you need to first understand this. Um, I'll give you kind of the basic rundown. Uh, I like just distributing twice in order to solve these types of problems. Some of you will like FOIL or some other method, LOIFING, because it's the same thing as FOIL, just in a different order. Um, however you like to do it, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna show you the more efficient way in just a second, because this is called special case. So there's a more efficient way to do it. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how we get the same thing if we distribute, okay? So we get plus five X and then we get minus 25. Now, the reason why these are special cases is because these are gonna be cases that always pr produce the same result. There's gonna be like a pattern to them. So we have uh, like terms here that are gonna cancel out. This negative five X will cancel with that positive five X, leaving us with X squared minus 25. Is this a coincidence? It is not. Think about uh, this first term, okay? And this last term in each set of parentheses. Notice how this is the same thing as X squared, okay? X squared, and then this is the same thing as five squared, okay? Oops, I meant it squiggly. And then we have the same minus sign in between. Okay, whoops, not, this isn't a minus sign. We have the same minus sign in between. This is difference of squares. So actually we're gonna learn this in factoring also, but this is a difference of squares. This is a special case. Anytime it's the same term in the first term and the last term, and the only difference is one is a plus and one is a minus, you're always gonna have the first term squared minus the second term squared, okay? So for this one, you can go ahead and with all of these, you can go ahead and, and distribute and, and foil or whatever you wanna do. But I'm just gonna look at this and I'm gonna be like, okay, look, I have the first term's the same, the second term's the same, and the only difference is between the two is one positive, one is negative. So I'm just gonna say this is n squared minus one squared. Or my final answer is gonna be n squared minus one. There's my answer. If you wanna foil it out, fine, but this is the most efficient way to do this. Number four, same deal. We notice how we have, um, and I'm just gonna to switch to purple just to make it quicker. We have the first term the same, we have the second term the same, and we have the signs are different. It doesn't matter that the first one's negative, the second one's positive, first one's positive, second one's negative. The only thing that matters is that they're different signs. So I'm gonna get x squared minus three squared, x squared, whoops, x squared minus nine, final answer okay now don't be quick to say oh this is p squared minus one squared okay this is different now we have p minus one times p minus one that's what this squared means we multiply itself times uh multiply itself twice now with this case anytime it's squared we're going to have a different scenario so let me just go ahead and show you okay so we're going to get p squared minus 1p minus 1p plus 1, okay, or one, uh, negative 1 squared, okay? Uh, so what happens here? We're going to get p squared minus 2p plus 1. Another way to think of this last one is p squared minus 2 times 1p times 1p, and you're probably thinking, why am I writing it like this? I'll show you in just a second. Plus negative one squared, okay? Why did I write it like this? Is because this is the form. We're gonna square the first term, that goes here. We're gonna square the last term, that goes there. And then we double the product of the first, uh, oh, sorry, that's not one P, one P, sorry. That's one P, that's P times one. That's what I meant to say, mm, sorry. P times one, you're probably confused there. And then I'm gonna double, okay? I'm gonna double the first term times the last term. So P times one and then double it. And that's the form. I'm gonna get that every time with these uh, problems, okay? So let me give you another example. I'll start with six. Um, change to green just so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna square my first term, n squared. I'm gonna square my last term, nine, and I'm gonna multiply three times n and then double it. And since it's all positive, it's gonna be positive all around, and I get n squared plus six n plus nine, okay? So let me do another one. 
Uh, I'll do this minus 5. So we get double of my first term because it's squared. This is squared. This is the pattern. Minus 10n, 5n, 5 uh, times n doubled. Negative 5 times n doubled. Negative 5 times n is negative 5n. Double is negative 10. And then negative 5 squared is positive 25. There's my answer, okay? This is not the same thing. This is not squared. This is the one where we have x squared. And then we're going to subtract the square of this, minus 25, okay? So these are all special forms. There's, this is a way to do it quickly, okay? So let's go on to the second page just so you can see some of these tougher problems. Uh, okay, we see that the form, this is the same, this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. The only difference is these signs are opposites. So we're going to have 7v squared squared minus 6 squared. Okay, so this gives us 49v to the fourth minus 36. That's going to be our answer. Okay, so much, much quicker than doing it a different way. Um, let's see if we have a tougher one. Okay, this form, okay, this is squared this time. This isn't difference of squares. That one's difference of squares. This is a perfect square binomial for those looking for the name. So we're going to do 4a squared 7 squared, and then we're going to double the product of 7 times 4a and we're gonna double it, okay? That's the form here. We square it, we double the middle term of the sum uh, of the products, not the sum, and then we square the last one. You gotta be careful with subtraction. If it's subtraction, we're gonna keep this middle one uh, the same. If that's the same, that's the same, okay? In this case, it's both positive, so they're positive. So we're gonna have 16a squared, don't forget to square both of these, uh, plus we have seven times four is 28, doubled is 56a, plus 49, and that's going to be our final answer. So as you can see, it's just a matter of uh, just kind of remembering the form and just, just applying it from there. If you want to foil it out, just to be safe, you can always do that. You can always just rewrite this as negative 9x squared minus 10y and multiply it by negative 9x squared minus 10y, okay? That's a way, and then just be safe. If you want to do it that way, that is safe. You won't be wrong by doing it. Will it be as fast? No, it won't, okay? The quick way to do it is negative 9x squared, squared, okay? Because I know this form, this is perfect square binomial, squared, and then minus, and then I'm gonna double negative 9x squared times negative 10y. Okay, so that was a little tougher one. We got a, a lot going on in this middle term, but this is just going to be 81x to the fourth because anytime you square a negative, it's going to be a positive. Then we get 100y squared, and now this is the beast right here. It's going to be positive inside the parentheses, but we have a multiple of a negative outside, so it's going to be negative. 10 times 9 is 90, times 2 is 180x squared y. And then this is positive because we squared a uh, a negative and it's going to be positive okay the only one that could be possibly negative for these ones is the middle term these first and last terms have to be positive because we're squaring them then we have difference here you have difference of squares so we have 7u squared minus 6v squared 49u squared minus 36b squared final answer okay that's all there is to uh, these types of problems. Hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you next time on West Explains Best. Take care.